And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we got whooped again, man. My bad, but hey, man, <laughs> you know, you know, it's an ugly baby, but it's our baby, man. We we yeah. we still got to come to work and get y'all some answers, man. You know, we're gonna break down this thing. Brian watched the film. I watched the film. I'm gonna ask him some questions. He gonna cut me off. Be like, well, Vash, what do you think? You know, Brian like to do that. Yeah. But man, Brian, before we get going, I, I didn't get your opinion on this. This happened pregame yesterday. Yeah. You know, the head coach came out and said there was not a scandal here. There was no scandal involved. There is no Illuminati stuff involved. Me and um, uh, Clarence Hill headbutted about this uh, yesterday on the postgame show and DLA sure. postgame show. I was like, man, you know, Debo Samuel looks physically ill. Yeah. And he's out there playing. Mm-hmm. Rico Dowdle, all reports say he's dancing and signing autographs and bopping around the music. Why is our best running back not, not playing? Brian brought us, you know, I, I understand if this was like deuce or something, if deuce came down with a mysterious injury, it's, you know, we get young guys that come up with mysterious injuries all the time so that they can, yeah. we can have a roster manipulation type move, you know, Rico Dowdle mysteriously showed up as ill on the, on the report and he was out and there was all kind of video of him looking just fine. And it happened to be when Dalvin cook was elevated. Brian brought us, what's your take <laughs> Yeah, I was. Uh, I knew this was going to be a story, potentially Saturday night, mm. and uh, I was watching the LSU Texas A and M game. And congratulations to all the Aggies out there For sure. uh, on the victory. Well played. Um, I I was watching various guys like Clarence Hill. Right. I was watching Calvin Watkins. I was watching people tweet out about projecting who might be the inactives. Could this be the time where we see uh, Zeke as an inactive? Mm. You know, because I didn't know really what direction they were going to go. And I, I really started to kind of dive into, um, you know, start texting people. And, you know, and by the time I got through the A&M game, I pretty much had an idea that the running backs of when you looked at them were, were going to be Dowdle, was going to be Elliott, was going to be Cook, and was going to be Lipke. That's what I had Saturday night when I went to bed. And the inactives, I was, you know, people were asking me about it, and I – kind of got an idea that they were going to go light at cornerback. And I tweeted about that a couple of different times. They weren't going to dress Carson and they weren't going to dress Booth. And Deuce Vaughn was going to be inactive. He was going to be, you know, the, one of the running backs that was inactive. And so I'm thinking, okay, cool. Well, that's what we're going to go to battle with. The next day, I'm on the pregame show. We're starting to get whispers about uh the inactives uh we get the kind of the whispers from the cat well not the whispers we get the report from the cowboys pr department that that dowdle had gotten sick and so christy scale myself eric chiafala were all kind of working that angle seeing what exactly was going on there and so i was here i am i text some people that i know in the organization what about this whole thing with rico dowdle getting sick and I kept getting back. Well, nothing's confirmed yet on that. Nothing's confirmed. I go, okay. So um, the intent that I went to bed with on Sunday, Saturday night, excuse me, Botch, was that they were going to go light at corner. And so when it happened, I wasn't shocked because you know, I've been on with teams before guys have gotten sick before. And you're right. It the optics of it looks very, very bad. I never got the never got the feeling that Rico Dowdle was going to be inactive on Saturday night. I never. Now maybe something changed. You know, that morning I, I could never get anybody to tell me officially what was going on with Rico Dowdle. It was hey, we got nothing confirmed right now. Nothing confirmed, you know, and, and I, and I asked some very high level people that would tell me what's going on. And 
So I know it looks very, really bad, sure. but I, I just, if they would have told me Saturday night, keep an eye on Rico Dowdle, he's probably going to be inactive. I'd been okay. But the fact that they were telling me that it was going to be Vaughn on the running backs and then Booth and Carson and Parsons, you know, in, in that group, well, let's go. I was kind of like, okay, okay, th this is fine. He, he legitimately might have gotten sick. Does it look that way? You know, was he dealing with the crowd? Was he signing autographs? Sure. He was doing all that. Did he look disappointed he wasn't playing? Sure. Um, you know, but hit the intent. Why are you smiling, Brian Broaddus? Why are you smiling? That's what I'm saying, Broaddus. That's what I'm, I'm saying. Not smi I mean, I'm not smiling. I just know that the intent was him to be active Saturday night. That was the intent, was for him to be active Saturday night. And I, I don't know... I don't know what happened between Saturday night and the time they got off that bus there at Levi Stadium. I don't know. See, I, I, it looks bad. It, it surely looks bad. But I know Saturday night the, there wasn't I, – I, I feel like I could have gotten, we're going to sit Daddle. He's not feeling well right now. Sure. I mean, they could have floated that out already. Yeah, they could have said, "Hey, listen, Rico's come down with something. Here we go." You know, they the the interesting thing is, as you saw last night in the game, Dallas didn't have their PR director with them on the trip. Mm. You know, and so now you're handling announcements and all this stuff without the director being there. Mm. It looks bad. It looks bad, but I'm. And people are going, ah, oh, Broadus, you're a sucker. I can hear him right now. I can see it in the comments at five thirty in the morning. Oh, you know, do you, I mean you? You're you're saying a luminary thing, aren't you? Is that what you're doing, Brian? It looks it looks quite odd. You know, it is odd. We, it is odd. We, it we, is odd until it is odd until <laughs> until I'm sitting there thinking like he was going to dress. The cornerbacks were going to be, and the cornerbacks ended up sitting. Yeah, all those cornerbacks sat. Yeah, you know. And did did Deuce Vaughn? I think he just played special teams, mm. you know. So I, we've it, both played. I'm interested to see what you have we, to say. About we we we've both played football before, Brian. Uh -huh. And it's a game that you overcome things. Mm -hmm. And when the the scale of the games get bigger, the more mm -hmm. things you overcome. Yeah, this was a humongous San Francisco game, Brian. It was. This game is humongous in the grand scheme of your season. It's right. San Francisco. It's an opportunity to beat up on a boogeyman that's weak. It's a conference game. And you and you both are desperate teams. Right. You, 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 this, this ain't a game that you just kind of sit out because I'm feeling kind of sick. Now, when yeah. Debo was sick, we got to see the doctor's note. Yeah. And Chris Collins. Hospital visit. And, Hospital visit, and, yeah. And Chris Collinsworth saying, man, you know Debo huffing and puffing on the sideline. He looks yes. physically labored over that. Yeah. Nick Harris from Fort Worth, from Fort Worth Star Telegram say, "Hey, I don't know, man. Rico over there dancing. He dancing the music. He over there chilling, y'all. I just... saw that tweet and I knew immediately what was about to happen. So, Brian, is what it feels like to me. We want to see what Dalvin Cook has in store. We we need to know what Dalvin Cook is, but we don't want to not play Zeke. Roll over seniority. Roll yeah. over respect, Brian Bryce. That's what it looks like to me. Oh no." I'm, Hunter Lippy has immunity because he play fullback kind of sort of, you know, and spe all the special teams, all the teams, Brian brought us no other running back plays all the teams like him, all the teams. Yeah, man, this feels like Ezekiel Elliott. And look, I don't know. And, and this, this makes it worse. If this was an owner GM call, that makes your head coach look, look terrible. Well, all right. Let me be, let me be fair here. Then please. Por favor. I've been in that chair. See if you play. I've been in that chair, and I've been places where general managers have suggested, can we take a look at this guy? Can we take a look at this guy? And here I am, not shilling for the organization. I'm just telling you, I've been in that chair before where general managers have asked, 
hey, is it possible we take a look at this guy? You know, it, 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 yeah. now what's bad is, what's bad is, is did if, if Rico Dattle took reps all week, if he took reps all week with the ones and then they, they did what they did to him, that would look bad. But I, I have been in organizations and I'm not defending Jerry here. I'm just trying to be fair. I have been there where a general manager said, Hey, can we please take a look at this guy? And if we're going to have this guy active, can we take a look at this guy? And it's up to the head coach. Head coach could say, sure, absolutely. Let's fit him in. We'll, we'll do what we have to do. There's a side of me that I thought last week, you know, in that Detroit game that they asked, you know, Jerry asked for Zeke to get some work. Mm. And what did they do? They didn't give Rico Dattle very many carries. That's where I thought it was Mike going, oh, okay, sure. We'll take a look at him. And then, you know, and then it looks just terrible. And Mike was probably thinking, whew, don't have to do that again. And, don't have to do that one again. And, Brian, let me just be fair. Strangely enough. I was I, trying to be fair until you were not fair. Strangely enough, I think Zeke had his. They're going his, after the general manager. I think Zeke had his had his best rushing day, strangely enough. I he think did. he I think he, he had I think he had his best day. Weirdly, and it, and it wasn't a great Almost day. Almost half his carries were over four yards. It wasn't a great day, but it was his best day. It was his best day. But Brian, I just think my my whole thing was I don't mind Zeke being here, but I right. never want to see Zeke look at Tony Pollard who's a better running back, be like, hey, come off the field. It's my turn. I yeah. never want to see that. And this yeah. feels like, I'm just doing a microphone. Look, right. hey, Mike Leslie, me and you don't know nothing. Neither yeah. of us know anything. I don't know nothing, Brian brought us. Mm -hmm. This feels like Ezekiel Elliott went to the teacher and said, hey, can you tell him I don't want to be inactive no more? And it yeah. feels like that. It feels like Ezekiel Elliott went to Jerry and Jerry went to Mike and said, hey, why don't you just... Uh, Okay. Yeah. You know, if that's, I, I, I'm not going to disagree with that because like I say, it doesn't look right. The optics right now doesn't look right. Rico Dattle is your best player, you know, and we saw last night and, you know, when we get into this game, maybe, maybe Dalvin Cook's inexperience in the offense might've hurt you in a way. Mm. The first Dak interception. Blocks. Blocks. Yeah. They needed a hero block. I call it a hero block, but they needed a hero block. It it was a, I'm on the right side here. It's pressure over here. Dak kind of drifted to his right anyway, you know, drifts to his right and really can't step and throw. It's all arm and open and yeah, and you're going to see it. Going to need a hero block here from, Number 20. Watch the play. Stop it. Whoop. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, what happened? You got a little technical. Yeah, yeah. We had, we're we're, we're going to work, we're gonna work on this one day. We're yeah, gonna we we, we had a little difficulty. We're going to get one of those. Yeah, we're we going to get one right. of those, uh, you know, the, the one of them Herb, Herb, Street, Herb Street clicker things. We're going to get there one of those. Go. Okay, if you could stop it when they snap the ball. If you just want to get the snap. Here comes the ball. Right there. Stop it. Okay. You're going to get, the way this looks right now, if you see that number 20 who's standing right next to Dak, that would be, that's your guy right there, Dalvin Cook. Okay? Now, Dalvin Cook is going to be responsible. See how he steps up. He's looking to see if a linebacker is going to shoot. Now, what they needed was what I call a hero block. He needs to, if things, if his guy is not coming and he's going to stay in, maybe help her. See, he immediately goes out and route. If he kind of feels, if he sees to his right that steel is in trouble, he could, bam, he could have hit, he could have peeled back, you know, and, and just immediately, like his eyes were straight ahead at the linebacker, but if his eyes were to the outside, and maybe this is not knowing everything about the nuances of their pass protection, but once, I mean, I, you get what, that hero block right there. He turns, he turns and blocks outside right there. Now maybe that gives Dak a chance. Yeah. Maybe that gives. But see Dak, see see how Dak. If you watch, if you could go back a little bit, 
Dak always talks about footwork and he kind of drifts. He kind of drifts to his right. You know, now maybe he's feeling the pressure from maybe he's feeling the pressure from Guyton's side. And so he's trying to lift, but he's really going right into the teeth of the pressure, you know, with with Steel. Steel Steel looks like to me he's beat worse than what's going on with Guyton. So Dak, you know, he feels that. Now he's gonna he's gonna go, he's gonna try and go up, but he kind of goes to his right, which goes into and now his throwing motion, he's got nothing but arm. Okay. If we could run this play back, let me show you what's going on. If you go to the sideline, I want to show you something if we could. Is that possible? Okay. I I hate this play. And I hate this play for the reasons of you do nothing. Stop it. Just let me explain something if I could real quick, Ron. The, I already know what thing, you're saying. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, the thing, the thing that bothers me the most is you've got you've got Tolbert on the outside and you've got and you've got this smash route, and there you go. What's holding Brown in the middle of the field? Nothing. Nothing. Tolbert, if, yeah, what's holding him? There's nothing. There's no threat. So all of a sudden, all he does is he sees Dak is going to load this thing up and throw it. He's on the, he's on the track. Yeah. There's no, there's no route. There's no, no Ferguson, no Tolbert. No, nothing to hold him in place. You know, you, you, it turns into two on one just by the route. Yeah. Now, I don't know if there's a mistake here or not. I, I, you know, this is where you don't know. Maybe is Tolbert supposed to run? Is Tolbert supposed to run a vertical route to hold the safety? I, I don't know that. But that smash route he runs does nothing. Look at, look at Brown in center field. He's he's pedal. He's going to pedal, and then he immediately hunts up. Look at that. He hunts the outside up. He sees what's happening. Ball hangs. Now you got to pick. But you know you had so many things. You kind of needed a hero block from you know from Cook, and it might have been because he didn't really know the total scheme. And then there's the play design of. <laughs> Nobody holding the safety in the middle of the field. And now you got two on one on the outside. As I said, ball hangs, and now it's a bad turnover. Brian, I feel like Mike McCarthy was was pretty incompetent this whole game. You know? And I I, I there were there were points of this game mm -hmm. where, yes, I would agree. That third quarter, very incompetent sure. calling plays. Sure. Very incompetent. I you think know, three 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 and outs. Go sure. ahead, sir. Go ahead. You know, Brian, what we do is, you know, we have to do the post game show, which is all the emotion, right? But I think right. I have to be really careful to just come out and say, "Oh yeah, Dak Prescott sucked today, terrible." And Dak Prescott could have played a better game. There's a lot of things could that, have played that much, yeah, absolutely. That, that could take yeah. sacks and not just throw the ball in danger, right? That could right, right. process a little quicker. There's definitely things that can do, but Brian. Me and my audience laugh every time we see receivers run up the field and turn around. It's yeah. nauseating. There was a couple times, and look, you can really watch the 49ers. They know what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. They, every time Jake Ferguson ran a seam, they know he was running a seam. If yeah. CeeDee Lamb is running some kind of crossing route, all the linebackers know to kind of drift in that direction. Mm -hmm. Every time there's like a little run down field and turn around, a little stop route or something, you got to run through a defender to get to that because they're sitting down on it. If it's an, They don't even respect Jalen Brooks when, he, when he's out there running nine routes. He's just out there running around. Brian yeah. Broaddus. Well, what's unfortunate, please, Fosh, real quick. Please. The final fourth down play, third down, you try the vertical route again with Turpin uh, personally my two cents I think Turpin's got to come up with that ball sure you know I think feet would have been in it's a it's a catch a ball over his head he's a punt returner he understands catching the ball up over his head he gets that he understands that he understands how to track a ball you know this 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 route to me this route to me is this needs to be caught. Sure. This needs to be caught. Perfect throw. Yeah. It, and, it, and it's an, and it's an opportunity. I mean, if you look at from the end zone, I mean, his, the way he adjusts, like his feet are going to be fine, but it's like he's left hand 
it's like his, I thought initially his hands were late and they might be a tad bit, but man, I mean, that ball needs to be caught. Yeah. I mean, that needs to be, you know, if anything, high point that ball, mm. high point the ball, get the feet down and boom. I mean, we've seen, I mean, it was the Philadelphia game. We had saw T.Y. Hilton catch something sure. very similar like this. Yep. You know, there's a small 30. guy going up the sidelines, mm-hmm. you know, huge play in the game, the huge play in that Philadelphia game. Yeah. And, but, you know, okay. But the, the downfall of this play right here, the downfall of the play is that you don't make the catch. And what happens four down Turpin's off the field mm. and Brooks is now on the field, you mm. know, and you know, you're thinking earlier in the, earlier in the game, Turpin had a fourth down reception. Sure. A little inside route that he ran, you know, got some separation. So here's a guy that's got the speed and the quickness to kind of make something happen. Maybe a little run after catch, but he's now off the field because he ran a vertical route and, you know, he's got to go take a rest. And that puts Brooks on the field. And what happens to Brooks? They double CD at the bottom. Brooks gets tangled up at the top. There's really nothing going on. Dak gets flushed because Tyler Smith misses a block. Now, you know, it's there's nothing. It's just a fourth down of nothing. You know, Collins, Malik Collins, look, they just, he wins. And now Dak's got to move. And, you know, nobody's winning. Nobody's winning on any of these routes. You know, Dak's trying to move. Dak's got to go make something happen. Brooks gets tied up. Yeah. You know, ball game. They weren't even, weren't even good routes. No, was no. it? Was it? They were just they were just running around. <laughs> it was it was almost like you're playing like go down to the station wagon and take a left. Sure, you know they're playing some side yard football here. Yeah, there was nothing. I mean, the, this is the this is the maddening thing about Mike McCarthy is that the previous two drives, man, they were they were on point. Yeah, with some of their plays, his play calling, the mixing of the run, the pass. They were picking up things. They were helping the tackles. You know, things were going along pretty. And then those last four plays were some of the worst football plays you'll ever see for a chance to win a game. Brian, you feel like th- that that last drive, mm-hmm. three minutes, by the way, three minutes on the clock, like, oh, yeah. th- like three, three and a half is yeah. a minute. And it seems like Mike McCarty, th- he thought he had 30 seconds. Like that, that looks like a 30 People second. People were asking about running the ball. Do you think about even running the ball I there? Think, to kind of, I, I yeah. think you have to. I, I would love, honestly, I, I think this this would have been a great time to put Dalvin Cook in and just kind of throw it to him a little bit. I yeah. think I think Dalvin's one positive play was like catching the football this day. Right. So you know, ten yard game, yeah, yeah, for over sure. the middle. So, so I wouldn't yeah. want Dalvin Cook blocking nobody per se. Yeah. You can you can yeah. leave a tight end in there for that. But hey, man, you can kind of meander downfield a little bit and not have Screen to him. and not have to get seven points in one go right here. But I just yeah. felt like Mike McCarthy, he got he got nervous in my mind, Brian. But I, I look at him and it just looked like he get nervous. And, and well, I he just no, like he he th- he's thinking back. he probably had no timeouts. Sure. He's thinking no timeouts. And you know, they had moved the ball pretty well. I mean yeah. they they it, it had taken him some time to move. I mean they were on some they were on some marches and he probably thought three minutes maybe wasn't going to be enough. Know, which what? is unfortunate because you know they they needed that they needed that Pittsburgh drive and they didn't get the Pittsburgh drive, you know. But they could have they could have they could have Dalvin Cook screened that thing. I'm going to tell you another thing. Look at look at look at how San Francisco kind of killed this game. Mm. Handed Ricky Pearsall on the damn jet sweep. Sure did. Got that thing down there. You know that thing was a massive run. Yeah. Uh, CD Lamb maybe. Jet sweep that thing, massive run. Maybe I, you know, maybe Turpin. Matt, instead of throwing Turpin a vertical route, hand him the jet sweep and let him see if he can make something happen. I think you know. I think Turpin's much better when he's like deep ball crossing the field, or deep like ball cross or deep ball going away where Dak can lay it on him. I mean, like you not know, the sideline, like, not the sideline. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, when he could, when he can maybe get vertical and then you throw it where he can run underneath it. Yeah. You know. That one, that one was right on top of him. I, I that was seriously a good pass. That ball needs to be caught. I mean, that ball needs to be caught. You know, the game's on the line there. You high point that ball, you catch that ball. You know, you're now you're standing down there. You know, now you could do some things. Now you can run the ball. Now you can throw the screens. Now you can find a way to, you know, kind of 
you know, put San Francisco in some harm's way. But man, they could they just couldn't get it done. It's it's they just kind of reverted back to some of the crap that we saw in the third quarter, that three and out garbage that they were running. Three straight times they went three and out, you know, nine plays. And one time, one time, damn, San Francisco had an out of bounds kick too. Mm. Gave you the ball at the 40 yard line and you weren't going anywhere. Sure. Didn't go anywhere. Sure. Oh. Brian, I think this, um, so let's just be clear the defense got their ass kicked on the ground. But I think yeah. that they did a good enough job to win the game for you. I saw, I saw where you were on your, your post game show and I, you know, I like what you did there. Um, you know, and, and people are going to say, oh, damn, Brian, you're defending Zimmer. No, Mike's Mike's struggling. Mike, you know, Mike, they're giving up big plays. They're giving up explosive plays. Those sure. are things that Mike doesn't do. That, you know, I was, hey, I was coming on here talking about being buttoned up. And, you know, they, they, are, they are struggling with these explosives. Sure. They really, really are. But, you know, let's say it this way. You know, and, and it just amazed me last night that Chris Collinsworth, if he just did some research, would have understood this. When San Francisco gets in the shotgun, they're throwing the football. Sure. When San Francisco gets underneath center, they're running the football. Mm -hmm. 75%. So, and we talked about that. We talked about, hey, you're going to have to defend the outside, the toss sweep, and they get underneath center. So he was surprised that Zimmer was blitzing so much in the gun. He goes, well, he's got no respect for the run. Well, damn, Chris. You know, the metrics say 75% of the time in shotgun, you know, or 75% under center, they're going to run the ball. Sure. Why? What threat do they have? You know, what threat do they have, you know, handing it off? They, they not, not out of gun, they don't. They haven't shown it. You know, they haven't shown it. So to me... The, the problem the problem in this game and and see and I'll and I'm gonna say this and then I want you to comment if you would and tell me what you think I think there's a couple of different things that happened here the quarterback's ability to run and scramble hurt you mm -hmm. in this game sure his ability to improvise when he needed to to escape when he needed to it hurt you in this game Second thing that helped you and uh, hurt you in this game was you should have gone into this game knowing how banged up San Francisco was at wide receiver and completely focused on stopping George Kittle. Yeah. You know, it wasn't till putting putting Wilson on George Kittle is not a good idea. Terrible we've idea. We've seen we've seen that. Yeah. Putting Lewis putting maybe McQuamu on him, which they did later, much better idea. But they went to, they went, they died on that hill. They died on that hill. And to me, without, without Debo Samuel, excuse me, without uh, Brandon Ayuk, <laughs> without a healthy 100% Debo Samuel, yeah. I am not letting George Kittle beat me in this game. And George Kittle beat you in this game. Mm -hmm. He beat you. You didn't have a good plan for him. You didn't have a good plan for the quarterback running. That was tough. And you didn't have a really a good plan for how to handle George Kittle. And that, that, that right there, uh, that defensively was killer. Because we knew Garendo was going to be good. We, we, we've talked about him. Draft shows, you know, many conversations. I know Aisha Morris, and I want to give her credit. You know, she was at the East West game and she says, Brian, have you seen this kid from Louisville, this running back? I'm like, no. And she goes, you got to watch him. This kid's got burst. He can catch, he can run. You know, she gave me the whole nine yards on the guy and she was absolutely right. But so if you follow along, you knew that they were going to be able to run the ball. That, that was not going to be, I mean, you got fortunate that their back got knocked out, but sure. they had a capable backup. They were going to, they did a great job. You had some guys that played pretty well, by the way, against the run. I thought, Golston. Chauncey Golston had a fantastic day. I think Golston, you know what? And th and this is going to shock people. I think Diggs gave you a little something in playing some defense there. Now, I know him and Mike Leslie went at it. And I think that Diggs probably took it personal from Mike Leslie that, you know what? I played one of the most physical games. I've seen this guy play far worse than run defense and not get criticized. Sure. He probably felt like, what do I have to do? 
you know, you're going to grade me on that one play when I, when I had four run game tackles, you know, four run game tackles, yeah. you know, you're going to criticize me for this. I think he got a little defensive about that. So, but I, I think that with, for a defense that's playing with, with bailing wire and tape to kind of hold it together, I thought they played as about as best as they could. You know, I really do. I was going to bring that up too, Brian. And, you know, not only Diggs just making, making yeah. tackles, but there was this one play where, like, uh, use check is lead blocking. And yeah. Diggs comes in from the outside to crack on him. So I, I think it was Louis Fowl came over and cleaned him up or something like that. It was right. one of the guys. But I'm like, damn, look at Diggs coming down, cracking yeah. the lead block right there. I think I think Diggs took it took it personally. I think he, he took did. it personally. And there's a lot of people that say, oh, you out here tweeting, da-da-da. I can understand because I've played center before and I didn't always know how to snap. And people will talk shit about you if you don't know how to snap. And you would yeah. want to you would want to go talk about these dudes put a lot into this, Brian. And I yeah. think I think I think Diggs heard all the all the chatter, and I think in the in the bye week, I I think he he thought about doing something about it. C D yeah. Lamb ran ran with a lot more with a lot more vigor and anger today his too. His route, his second touchdown route was an outside in cut, and it got the two guys to collide to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's what happened. He got brown. He got brown and green to collide. Yeah, because of the route. He he took it personal, but yeah, I I understand. You know, I, you know, that's I, I could get it. People going after Diggs. I get it. But he, I think it was from the physicality aspect. I think it was one of his better games. Sure. I've seen him play far worse. But yeah, Mike, they give up too many big plays. Yeah. They just give up too many big plays. But, you know, the couple of times they needed to get off the field, they got off the field and you, you know, that final one, they gave you plenty of time, you know. They didn't give you leave you thirty seconds to try and go win the game. They gave you three minutes to go try and win a game. Mm-hmm. You know, didn't get it done. Play caller, quarterback, you know, offensive line, receivers. Tight. I mean, just kind of take a pick. Those last four plays were. Eh, it was not winning football. It just wasn't winning football. Mm-hmm. Chauncey uh, had a fantastic day versus the run and in pass pro. Yeah. I think he got some pressures, but I don't think. Uh, Purdy was in any real danger. No, he really was. Uh, but it's rushing. funny. They, there were more. Dallas had more pressures than San Francisco in this game. Now how that work? Because I feel yeah. like I feel like Bosa got. If he played thirty yeah. plays, I feel like he got thirty pressures. Just feels if you like look, it. it's funny. The metrics came out. I think Dallas. I think Dallas was dealt with twenty five percent pressure, and San Francisco was. It felt like thirty is what the number. I think it was thirty something. I, I go back and check, but. It's kind of crazy that I was like, no, wait, that's, how did that happen? That sounded like a lot, man. Terrence Steele got towed up. That's, yeah. that's no, it's tough, man. Terrence did. Terrence did. Guyton, good plays, Guyton wasn't terrible in this game. Guyton that, had a solid you know, game. I, I was worried about you. Somebody getting worried about getting tore up in this game. Mm-hmm. Guyton did not get tore up in this game like I thought he might. You know, I mean, that's that was Floyd. Floyd's very capable over there, and it got to the end of the game, and what they were trying to do was they put they put a. Uh, they put your, uh, your, you know, they put the rusher over there. They sure. put Bosa over there against him, mm-hmm. and he was able to kind of hold up. They gave him some help a little bit at times. You but, know what? Man, you know what happens with Guyton? Guyton loses, but he recovers really well because he's athletic and he's long. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing about it is he, he still hasn't played any against anybody that's he's better than. Sure, you know every every guy that he plays against is better than him. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's and that's hard. You know, it's every once in a while you want to catch a guy that you, you know. That you're clearly better than, and and his first uh, seven games in the league, you know the games he's played, it, it hasn't been very very easy for him. It really hasn't. Man, Brian brought his boy. I know Dalvin ain't not Dalvin. Rico can't be sick next week, man. I just know Rico ain't. He ain't got one of them kind of sicknesses. You know what I'm saying? You know, I know the. Is this a one and done for Dalvin Cook? I think you got to give him another try. I think you have to give him another. I th- he didn't give me much in the run game. I think a lot. I think some of it is him running into the danger. Um, yeah. You know, his vision was a little, but you know, he's probably rusty or whatever. But I, I think there may be something there. I just don't think you could just kind of give up on it in, in one game and you've given Zeke seven tries. So I think yeah. you you you've got to go back with Dalvin again. But Brian, what do you yeah. think? What do you think happens next week with the running back situation? By the way, I, I real quick, I was looking at the, I, I get into trouble looking at metrics. Sure. The 49ers were playing, they were playing six, seven, six is supposed to be light box, six or less. Mm-hmm. 
light box. Seven or more is what they call neutral. Yeah. Eight stack. By the way, Dallas tried to play their stack box game and it they got worked on that. Never worked. Um <laughs> but the uh the thing was that Zeke had his best runs against the light box. Mm. So that, you know, I mean say what you want. Next week, I I think the same I think the same plan will probably hold true. They'll find a way to make somebody inactive. Uh, you know, whether it be those corners again, because you'll probably be getting back. Hopefully you'll be getting back bland. Uh, so, you know, you need to get him, man, you're going to have to, I think you're going to have to create a roster spot for him. Yeah. Am I right about that with yeah. bland? Cause he, he's, he's on a, he's on the designate. He's on the 21 practice. I think this is his last week. If he, if he doesn't, if he's not active this week and they might make him active just to keep him and then make him inactive sure. because his practice window is about done. Hmm. So <laughs> we'll have to see how that all plays out. But gut feeling on the running backs, probably going to do what they were going to do Saturday night. I think it's going to be Dowdle. I think it's going to be Zeke. I think it's going to be Cook. And I think it's going to be Hunter Lipke is what I think. And they're going to try and find a way to Maybe maybe rotate this thing. They got to they got to give Cook at least one more shot. Sure. It, by the way, if they lose this game, they ain't trading for anybody. I don't think they trade for nobody anyway. I I'd think... be interested. I'd be interested to see if they would be sellers. You know, I'd be interested. Use a baseball term. Sure. You know, you get to a certain point in the season, and you're like, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. I don't think they'll ever admit that. But you go out and lose to Atlanta, and then all of a sudden Philadelphia wins. And the commanders win. That's three games up. You know, I mean, Dallas has got games. They've got two games with Philly and two games with with the commanders. Yeah. But if if you go out and lose this game and you're three and five, I don't I don't see Jerry Jones going out and getting somebody. I think we I think we have too many needs to be buyers. Yeah. I think we got too many needs to be buyers. And, you know, this this kind of carried over into another, uh, you know, draft kind of conversation I was having. Yeah. I'm like, hey, man, running back is a very sexy pick, but you kind of need, like, one tech and, you know, maybe, like, wide receiver. There's, some of this there's not a stuff. position. There's not a position you couldn't draft. Probably corner. But probably. there's not a position that you couldn't draft that couldn't help this football team. Yeah. They're that point. Let me ask you this question, Vach, real quick, if I could. Every play. All these second contract, these guys, if your last name was Jones, how disappointed would you be in Dak, Lamb, Diggs, Martin, Steele? How how disappointed would you be in that crew? It's funny you said that, Brian, because we had a conversation similar Um to this earlier on my live stream. And I feel mm -hmm. like some players, you just have to pay the cost to do business. Mm -hmm. Some players, you have to pay the cost to do business. I think Dak is one of those guys. I think Lamb is one of those guys. I think Trey Diggs is one of those guys. Brian, I don't think these good players just rolled out the bed one day and forgot how to play football and be good. Sure, sure. So if my last name, I don't, I don't know if Jerry watched film for real, but my last name is Jones, I'm – sick of what's going on with this coaching staff and I think that the players on this team is going to far outlast the coaches on this coaching staff. Sure. But Brian, this is the conversation I had with my audience earlier. These miscellaneous kind of good dudes. Yeah. That's what I'm over. I think Trey Diggs is a, I think you got to pay your superstars. Terrence Steele. Guys like Osa. Yeah. Malik. I'm writing names down. Malik. Well, he Donovan, paid Wilson too. He paid Wilson. Donovan yeah. Wilson. I, I would have just found a way. You yeah. got safeties on the team that I feel like can play right now. You just got to cut a little fat. Donovan Wilson, man, Brian, I would have found a way. If you're not a super but duper star, looking back on it, I don't hate what they did with Tyron Smith or whatever, right? If right. you're not a super stupid to duper star, I'm trying to save my money with you, dog. I'm trying to save my money with you. Because look, when it when it comes down for like Ferguson to get his money, I'll go I'll go draft the tight end, man. Yeah. Well you tried to in the second round. Yeah. Hey, look, I I'll, I'll draft another. Hey, yo, look, we missed. Yeah. 
We missed, but yeah. I, but but watch it be the undrafted dude that's better than the than the second round pick. That's how it works. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean it span forward. I mean I he well I've never seen me fight the ball more than he fights it trying to catch it. Brian, how but, did Brian? Why the hell we get to the red zone and we go into an empty twenty two personnel and we throw, throw it the at, ball to Sam? In the back of the end zone, a jump mm-hmm. ball to him. What's going mm-hmm. on, Brian? I was I was thinking. I was going. What do we? Yeah, that's sometimes. Sometimes you know you're the smartest guy in the room. Hey, look what look what look what Shanahan did. Third and one, he has that back that back's gaining like seven yards of carry. Mm-hmm. He brings in Bell, the wide receiver who hasn't played the whole game. Yeah, hadn't played at all. He's like, hey, all right, Bell, we're gonna work you into the game here. We're gonna put you over here in the wing. You're gonna come in motion, and we're gonna try and throw you the ball. Well, Brian, what yeah. did we talk about? Right, we was like, if San Fran just runs the ball forty times, we lose regardless. Yeah. But yeah, if they lose. if they get into their ego and try to throw oh, the yeah, ball they, a little they, bit, it was an ego play. <laughs> we got a shot. ego. Look how smart I am. Yeah. Look how smart I am. Right, and the damn ball almost got intercepted. You yeah. know, got tipped up. But you're right about, like I say, the whole thing with. And I'm starting to think that you know we were we were kind of all I, I shouldn't say all I was cheerleading Ferguson. I think Ferguson's had some good moments. Sure, I've expected a lot more from him. But I just I think that Jerry Jones went on our radio station that that Monday, Tuesday, and got mad, got mad at Sean, RJ, and Bobby. He got mad at him because of just what you and I were talking about paying all these guys and none of them playing worth a damn for him right now. Mm-hmm. And he got, he got mad at Bobby and those guys and Sean for asking the question about those guys yeah. or asking questions about why, you know, he realizes, damn, I just paid a quarterback, just paid a wide receiver, you know, damn, damn guard held out on me, you know, <laughs> guard, guard held out on me. Now he's not playing at a hall of fame level. If Jerry Jones really wants to win and he means it, he needs to make Ben Johnson the highest paid head coach in the league and he needs to make Robert Sala the highest paid defense coordinator in the league. And you're, and I promise you, your investment on Trey Diggs and your investment yeah. on CeeDee Lamb and your investment on Dak Prescott is going to be totally different. We jump on the – look, Dak Prescott has limitations. No, he does. Dak Prescott has limitations. You can't run your offense like Joe Brady runs his offense with Josh Allen. Yeah. Josh Allen can carry you. Yep. Man, you can't ask Dak Prescott to carry you, man. You got to run the offense as if Dak Prescott can't carry you. Just like yeah. they do with Kirk Cousins, just like they do with Brock Purdy, just like they do with Jared Goff. Jared Goff ain't the most talented guy in the world. No. But he makes but, the throws and they don't ask yeah. him to do nothing goofy. See, you're that Detroit situation, you look at their head coach and you know, he's a, he's a difference maker and damn Aaron Glenn's a difference maker too. You got three on that Detroit staff. Yeah. That Ben Johnson the head coach and Aaron Glenn. Aaron Glenn's a damn good coach. Sure. You know, he's got Detroit's defense playing pretty well. Man, they 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 don't have they don't have their best defensive player and they're scoring fifty something points winning games. Quarterback doesn't miss any throws. Nope. You know. Tell you what, that's that commander bunch is scaring me a little bit. That Man. that might be a team of that might be a team of destiny right there. I tell you what, Brian, the people score what fifteen points all day and got a hail mary at the end. I think we can compete with that. We just can't give up the hail mary at the end. If you only score fifteen yeah. points on us, that's a good day, ain't it? Yeah, it's, that was that was incredible, man. Yeah, great I was sitting, we were on air, and I'm like, I we weren't on air, we were off air, and I lucky we weren't on air because I dropped the biggest s bomb. You know, I'm like. Oh, S and Shit. like that. Yeah. And, and when he caught that ball, I'm like, God, Hell of a play. Hell of a what play. a terrible way. Noah Brown. Can you, could you, yeah, can you imagine Dallas losing the game like that to the commanders? I can 100% see us losing you games like it, that. Cause we do goofy stuff like that all the time. We do. We do. You honestly do goofy stuff like that. We sure do. Sure do. And Brian brought us, boy, I hate having fun with you on this goofy ass game like this one yeah. you know what i mean but uh hey all yeah. we could do is uh keep on you know keep on trucking along keep on man. trucking along we felt like we was gonna lose san fran anyway so hey what, what, hey, what you want to do we, I, I know I, I, I yeah i had this one i had this one tw- uh 26 to 16 i was i was teetering i was teetering on that until a lot of people started uh all of a sudden offense just kind of woke up a little bit but uh yeah it's unfortunate yeah um you know had a chance it'd been nice to finish that game like you did against pittsburgh that's kind of how you were going to need to win that game. Yeah. You were going to have to win it kind of gritty, ugly, tough, that kind of thing. And 
You just weren't up to it, though. They were a little bit tougher for four plays there at the end. Man, it was were, close. But it's lot, still, they were a lot. They were a lot tougher in that third quarter too. It's close. Was, it, it's yeah. close, but it still feel like a blowout though, Brian. Boys. It, it, it does. Just, it absolutely does. You're right about that. You're right about that. Hey man, we're gonna come back tomorrow. We're gonna try to have a guest for you. If not, it'll just be me and Brian. We'll we'll figure it out. I'm gonna on dig one up. I'll dig one up for you. I'll, yeah, I'm gonna. I'll get back with you. We'll we'll have somebody fun. We'll have a fo- we'll have a football personality on this thing tomorrow night. All have right. some fun. Cool. We'll talk about it. And uh, hey, right. Wednesday and Thursday we're gonna break down the Falcons, and Friday we're gonna have some questions for you. We got a schedule, y'all. All right. I'm Vash Lombardi. Love y'all. The peace. Tap in with me, but Brian Broad is B R Y N Broad. Y'all be sure y'all tap in with him and leave your questions in the comments. He'll read them at five in the morning while he's going on a walk or something like that. All right. Y'all hold down. We love y'all. Peace. Till next time. Crown.